uh, but obviously uh, very successful. So what is this about the top 10, something that came out um, about you? Is it about your company, about you as an entrepreneur? What was it? There's some list where you were within the top 10 of, of something. I didn't quite catch that. Right. So um, America.gov did a, um, a top 10 list yeah. of entrepreneurs who started their company in their 20s. Okay. And in that list was uh, Bill Gates, uh, there was Michael Dell, wow. uh, the, the Google founders, uh, the Facebook founder, Russell Simmons, mm-hmm. and uh, I have no idea how, but uh, we were also featured there as well, my that business partner and I. So awesome. That was definitely a uh, fun part. You're in great company, and I'm sure it's going to get better and better. Our stories are going to get better and better as, as well, folks. Stay tuned. You're listening to On the Mic with Isaac. Time is flying by here. You'd think with uh, tea being the topic, we'd be more relaxed, but it seems very intense. I've got a very intense guy in the studio, Mr. John Paul Lee, the founder and CEO of uh, Tavalon, obviously a tea company. I love tea. I'm, I'm really happy you're here. Let's get to our best and worst um, this is kind of an, an open segment where you can talk about, I guess, ideally, you know, something in your uh, success story that you learn through kind of the hard way. Uh, those would be your, your worst. Best would be, could be the best, you know, experiences you've had, again, in this whole story and that some of our listeners might benefit from. Yeah, sure. Actually, my best and worst is, is tied to the same experience. Uh-huh. Um, two years ago, uh, there came a point, you know, when we were struggling with the business. Uh, uh, it wasn't picking up as fast as we thought it was going mm-hmm. to, and we were going through some obstacles. And the biggest hurdle for us was yeah. not having enough capital uh, behind us. Sure. You know, when we first started the business, we went in fifty-fifty with my business partner and mm-hmm, I. Mm-hmm. We didn't want any external cash, so uh, we said, "Let's just do it ourselves." So I ended up selling my house, wow. sold my car, liquidated my four hundred one k, sold all my stock options. Pulled out seven credit cards. Oh, and, my um, goodness. And that was the beginning of Tavalon. And uh, it was definitely still not enough. Mm-hmm. Being Operating a business out in New York yep. in Manhattan is is very costly. Oh, yeah. So that uh, came to a point where we were running out of cash, literally. Mm-hmm. And we needed to raise capital to okay. continue the business. And um, basically, my business partner and I made a, uh, a promise. Mm-hmm. Listen, we need to know when to walk away. Yes. And, you know, I, you know this is a... The story of, of foundership, right? Mm-hmm. Um, a, mem- a mentor of mine once told me, the closest a man ever gets to experiencing motherhood is when he starts his own company. Oh, man. And that I makes sense. And I truly believe in that. You That's... know, this is my baby, and I don't want my baby to fail. I want to, mm. to see it grow. So with that mentality, I basically um, said, okay, on this particular date was yeah. actually April 7th. Yeah. We are going to close the business if we do not find funding to further the business. Um, so we said, okay, fine. Let's let's go with it. I'll uh, I'll stick to that promise. Mm-hmm. April 6th came along and still no capital infusion. No. And so, you know, obviously we're we're quarreling back and forth. Okay, well, we got one day left. Yeah. You know, this is it. Said, All right. So I went home and I'm, I'm feeling, this is the <laughs> illest feeling I've ever had in my entire life. Major labor pains. Absolutely. Yeah. Major, major labor pains. Um, then July 7th came around. Four o'clock, still nothing. No still way. Still nothing. And he's like, you know, my partner's like, listen, we got we got to put this to an end. Yeah. And I was like, well, it's still not end of day yet. It's still April 7th, isn't mm-hmm. it? Literally, 5.30. 5.30 goes get a phone call, mm-hmm. I'm ready to invest. We got our first investor. <laughs> and uh, that was it. That was probably the worst day of my life as well as my the best day of my That's life. That's awesome. And I couldn't tell you how happy I was from that point on. It was just yeah. a miracle, almost somebody looking mm-hmm. out, you know, helping me out. So, yeah. you know, it's uh, April 7th is definitely a memorable day. <laughs> yeah, memorable day. like found foundation day. A lot of schools or companies have that one day can see it, the plaque, you know, or the, right. the, the red marked on the calendar. Celebrate April 7th. Exactly. Well, now that you have, um, you know, so much behind you, you've got your company. You are, of course, in Manhattan. You're here in Korea, expanding here more and more. Um, and in Brazil, too, is that right? 
Yes, we're actually opening up our offices in Curitiba and Sao Paulo as well. Wow. So you do a lot of traveling. What about the process? We have just a few more minutes. The process of creating a cool tea. Well, the process of creating a cool tea yeah. is about preference, number one. There's yeah. over 3,000 varieties of, of tea. So right. really, there's a tea for you out there. You know, the premise on Tavalon basically is I love music. Yeah. I don't know anybody else who doesn't appreciate music. Mm -hmm. There's a genre of music, whether it's hip-hop, reggae, yeah. jazz, classical, for everyone out there, as there is a type of tea right. for everyone out there. Mm. So we draw that correlation. We draw the parallel and say for every music yeah. and genre of music mm -hmm. for everyone, there is a type of tea, and we categorize our blends and infusions as such, and we call them mixes, remixes, and uncuts nice. as <laughs> in, in the musical theme. So basically... There is a tea for everyone out there. We've blended our teas uh -huh. to cater to everyone's palate so that there is something for everyone to enjoy. Cool. But it also really depends on uh, the education factor. Mm. I could give you the best tea in the world if you use the wrong temperature, yep. if you don't steep it long enough mm -hmm. or short enough, you're going to end up with the worst cup of tea. And on each tea, does it say a recommended time of steeping yeah. and stuff? On the bottom is the instructions. So okay. it tells you what temperature and how long... Uh, you should be steeping each uh, tea. Let's see here. Here's one. It says uh, one teaspoon loose tea per eight ounce water, 212 degrees Fahrenheit. Strain after five minutes. Wow. Nice. All the details are here. Okay. What I'm going to do is, again, shoot this. Put it up on our website because we can only do so much uh, visually uh, over the, the airwaves. I want to thank you so much for coming in. Uh, it's really the, the time has flown by. I yeah. feel like I've had some of this New York City tea, and and uh, I'm just wired. <laughs> <laughs> um, can continue success to you, and Thank you. Um, yeah, we hope to have you as a guest again with some more different flavors. Anytime, anytime. Okay, thanks for having me. Take care. I gotta have another sip of tea real quick. Hang on a second. Oh, that's good stuff. It's amazing how some things are right in front of your face, and you think, well, maybe nothing. Or maybe you're inspired to make a big difference, inspired to help people, maybe inspired to make money, not to work for somebody else, but to work for yourself. Wow, this guy was inspired and now is inspiring others, including myself. A nice success story. Did you guys enjoy it? Well, guess what? Next time we'll have someone else on the mic with me, Isaac, and have some more stories, share some good news, and maybe uh, get some inspiration. Right now, I'm going to go back to my cup of tea. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.